Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from executeautomation.com and in this first video of this video series, we are going to discuss about BDD, it's a Behavioral Driven Development. Behavioral Driven Development, it's a language specification and it's not a tool. So far in executeautomation.com, we discussed about various different testing tools like QTP, Selenium, Visual Studio and Test Complete. And also we have a video series for test complete but today in this video series we are going to discuss about BDD and its related tools so there are a lot of testing tools available supporting to BDD and we are going to talk about only one tool which is SpecFlow as I already told BDD is a specification but it's not a tool and BDD is actually based on test driven development if, if you guys already know what is TDD then you will have a very good understanding of what uh, TDD does and how the gaps have been filled in BDD so I'm going to tell you a little history about BDD BDD was first coined in 2009 by Dan North and uh, basically while he was taking a session on TDD he found some of the glitches which uh, TDD has and then he overcome that by writing a framework in BDD. So the first framework he wrote in BDD uh, was uh, using a Java and he named it as JBehave and he also wrote that in a Ruby programming language and he named it as RBehave. You can actually download that. So uh, and also the BDD's main uh, highlight is it's pretty plain text anybody can understand by seeing or reading the text of it so that's the reason I was mentioning that BDD is aimed to bridge the gap between a business analyst and a developer so if a business analyst reads the text he can understand what the test case is going to deal with similarly if a developer reads the text he can also understand what the actual code is going to do so that's the main reason BDD is very popular and it's getting very popular among the automation test engineers and many companies are really adopting it. So as I already told BDD is not only just bridging the gap between the business analyst and developers, it is also bridging the gap between a manual QA versus an automation test engineer and similarly a manual QA with a developer. There are various tools available to support this BDD concept and we're going to see only SpecFlow in this session but some of the various famous tools are Cucumber which is written in Ruby, Freshen which is written in PHP, JBehave which is written in Java, NBehave which is written in C Sharp and SpecFlow that's what we're going to discuss which is written in C Sharp and all these tools have one more language which is in common which is Gherkin. So Gherkin is actually a format for Cucumber specification. Basically it is a language specification for PDD. And Gherkin is a business readable domain specific language which lets anybody to understand the software behavior very easily and effortlessly since they are plain text. Gherkin has some spaces and indentation to define the structures. It has very few syntax which makes the parser to behave based on the structures. And it really makes sense because Gherkin is a plain text and it will not have any uh, syntax like a looping, uh, looping code like for loop or for each loop or it will have a condition statements like if or uh, it have uh, you know usings or import statements to, uh, to import a library and other stuff but since it's a plain text it will not have very few syntax that's what it is and Gherkin looks like a very simple plain text as you could as you could see here the highlighter stuffs these are the only syntax which the Gherkin has like features this is a syntax similarly background it's a syntax QN is a syntax, scenario is a syntax, and when, then, and. So these are the syntax. But do you really think this is a syntax? Well, yes, these are the syntax in Kirkins. 
and the parser which pass parses this gherkin really knows that it has to be done something based on the command which is given in the plain text so as you could see here in this particular text for the scenario we have register a user with a minimum password combinations so this is the name of the scenario and there is another statement like given I have opened the development site so if I give this particular text this will open my development site and then it will load the home page as it is given in the end so now you will have a question it's like how is this particular statement is going to open a development site and how is the next statement just given and is going to load the home page of my website well we're going to discuss all these stuffs in upcoming sessions so just hold tight so what is the uh, major difference between uh, the PDD versus the traditional automation like Selenium QTP or Visual Studio or test complete so BDD as I already told it's a plain text and it's very easy to understand and that's that what really makes it successful and everybody will understand that uh, but traditional automation if you could take it is full of code and it is very hard to understand for the manual test engineers or the business analyst but not for the automation test engineer itself but if it is then it's pretty hard well uh, that's what it is uh, and that's the reason the traditional automation uh, is very hard to understand and BDD is uh, easy to understand by a BA QA a developer an automation test engineer and everybody will be in the same page but in traditional automation the codes are understood only by the automation test engineers sometimes by developers and since it's a plain text format BDD can be shared even to stakeholders but in traditional automation we cannot share the automation script because even if we share the automation script they will hardly understand what you have written and it is easy to learn and implement but in traditional automation if your script grows larger it is uh, much harder to understand and it requires a lot of knowledge well this is the end of uh, part one of this series and in the next session we will discuss about gherkins in more detail thank you so much for listening